On behalf of Lieutenant General Mary K. Izagari, the Surgeon General and Commanding General, United States Army Medical Command, and Colonel Anthony K. Whitfield, Deputy Chief of Staff Procurement, Commander of United States Army Health Contracting Activity, and Senior Contracting Official, welcome to the United States Army Health Contracting Activity Change of Command Ceremony. During today's ceremony, Colonel Anthony K. Whitfield will relinquish command of the United States Army Health Contracting Activity to Colonel Michelle A. Lewis. The change of command is a long-standing military tradition. Its purpose is to formalize the changing of command through a symbolic transfer of units' colors from the outgoing to the incoming commander. Today, the command and colors of USACA will be passed from Colonel Whitfield to Colonel Lewis. The presiding host for today's ceremony is Lieutenant General Mary K. Izagari, the Surgeon General and Commanding General, U.S. Army Medical Command. Special guests today, ladies and gentlemen, our special guests attending today's ceremony include Lieutenant General Robert Collins, Major General Robert L. Bowery, Major General Retired Nancy Lee Price, Brigadier General Michael Pyle, Brigadier General Robert Ferry, Senior Executive Service Level 2, Ms. Megan Date, Senior Executive Service, Mr. Joseph Rainey, Colonel Freddie Adams, Colonel Georgina Granville, Colonel Colleen Cooper, Colonel Retired Mark Bustamante, Lieutenant Colonel Buki Butler with her husband Quincy and son Caleb, Command Sergeant Major Timothy J. Springer, Command Sergeant Major Jennifer Francis, Command Sergeant Major Victor Logino, <laughs> Sergeant First Class Retired James Parker and his wife Brenda Parker. Ladies and gentlemen, Colonel Whitfield is joined by his family, his daughters, Ashley and Arby Whitfield, his mother, Priscilla Whitfield, his father, Sergeant Major Retired Harry Whitfield, his sister, Deborah Cooper, his niece, Brittany Whitfield, his cousins, and his wife, Lester and Sadie Whitfield. Ladies and gentlemen, Colonel Whitfield would now present red roses and gifts to his family and loved ones. Tessin, Tessin, Tessin. Good morning. Good morning. All right, if you know Colonel Whitfield, you know that was weak. Good morning. Good morning. All right, so just want to give a couple of gifts. Uh, if you know me, you know my daughters, the apple of my eyes, Ashley and Aubrey. So just wanted to present you a little something. Daddy loves you so much. And so. Okay, so we have some roses here for the ladies of my life. Uh, We have some roses here for the lady of my life. So I have my mother here. And so just a quick story. In 2018, she suffered a massive stroke. Uh, the diagnosis was uh, she's uh, paralyzed on the left side. She'll never walk again. She'll have to be fed through a feeding tube. She'll be a vegetable for the rest of her life. She'll be laid up. So as you can see, she's here today. And, uh, and uh, so. so my Then I have my older sister. She likes to call me twin, but it's because she usually wants something. Uh, but uh, thank you. She uh, stays with my mom and makes sure she's OK. So thank you. Thank you for bringing mom out here to be a part of the ceremony. And we have Miss Brittany. So Miss Brittany, uh, she, she loved Texas so much that she used me coming here to move here. Um, so, um, um, so she decided to stay. And so thank you, sweetheart. I appreciate you. So Major General Retired Price, quick story. 
one day, um, I told the staff, we had a little group, I said, hey, uh, I'm not going to be in tomorrow because we would meet. And I said, hey, General Price has a meeting at C uh, CECOM, and so let's make sure she gets there, right? So I get into the office, and I said, okay, how's General Price? And they said, she walked. I said, she walked? What do you mean she walked? I said, I'm fired. <laughs> I am fired. And so I made it over to CECOM, and I looked in the conference room, and she looked at me, and it looked like, you're fired. <laughs> Uh, uh, but, um, ma'am, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. I love you. <laughs> I have a lot of bonus mothers. Um, so, Ms. Uh, Blondell, uh, of course, uh, we all uh, came from South Carolina, and so they moved here probably two, maybe three, four? Okay, four years ago. And so they came down from Dallas to, to, to be with me. So, bonus mom. Love you. <laughs> and we have her daughter, Miss Datra. Uh, <laughs> one of the best friends uh, a guy could ever have. So thank you very much. I appreciate you. Right. And we have Miss Sadie Whitfield. The Cool, calm, and collective to my cousin, Lester. Thank you, Sadie. Thank you. I appreciate it. And for the men. For the men, uh, if you look at Lester, he looks just like me. Um, so I treat him like a son. And so I just wanted to present you with the Yusaka coin. Thank you. Okay, Sergeant First Class Retired Parker, thank you for being here. He's a great mentor. Uh, uh, he's a pastor, and so whenever I need some divine counseling, I know who to go to. Appreciate you. And last but not least, I got a surprise yesterday. So uh, my best friend flew in, and uh, we've been doing this back and forth for over 30 years. And so he came in. So thank you all, thank you all, thank you all. Over to you, JP. Ladies and gentlemen, that was in tradition of symbolizing the appreciation of the support and contributions made by all of his family members. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Colonel Lewis is also joined by her son, Matthew Lewis. He is also now being presented a gift by his mom to welcome him to the organization, signifying the contributions and friendship soon to be realized with the command. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the singing of the national anthem by Mrs. Val Gibson and invocation by Chaplain Van Dress.
stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly dreaming and the rocket red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star spangled banner yet or the land of the free and the home of the brave, the brave. If you wish, please pray with me. Our gracious God, we come to you this morning to say thank you for placing your servant, Colonel Whitfield, to lead the U.S. Army Health Contracting Activity for the past two years. May you help the team build on his efforts that have served as a springboard for growth and ingenuity, leading to excellence for the customer of the customer. Bless Colonel Whitfield and his family as he transitions to the dynamic mission at SOCOM. And now we ask, Lord, that you would guide Colonel Lewis as she takes the reins of this critical mission. Grant her wisdom, vision, and discernment as she provides inspirational leadership to Yasaka as they endeavor to deliver top-notch products and services, contributing excellence to the heart and soul of Army medicine and beyond. Amen and amen. Please be seated. The mission of the United States Army Health Contracting Activity is to enhance Army medicine globally through the power of contracting for the total force, families, and veterans. The commander of USACA has the additional responsibility to serve as the senior contracting official the SCO executes, oversees, and manages all delegable contracting authority for the Commander U.S. Army Medical Command, including the oversight and administration of contracts for medical supplies and services for the officers and directors of the Office of the Surgeon General, U.S. Army Medical Command, and four medical readiness commands in support of Army medicine and military health systems. The change of command ceremony is a simple traditional event that is rich with symbolism and heritage. Key to the ceremony is the passing of the unit's colors. The colors represent not only the lineage and honors of the unit, but also the loyalty and unity of its soldiers. The colors are the commander's symbol of authority, representing his or her responsibilities to the organization. Wherever the commander is, there also are the colors. The passing of the colors symbolizes the transfer of authority and responsibility from the outgoing commander to the incoming commander. Because of the reverence, each of the ceremony participants feel toward the unit's colors, it is kept over the left breast of the possessor at all times. 
during the transfer. The passing of the colors demonstrates to the members of the unit that Colonel Whitfield has passed the mantle of leadership to Colonel Lewis. With this also passes the loyalty of the soldiers and civilians to their new commander. The transfer of authority begins as Sergeant First Class Tensaw passes the colors to Colonel Whitfield for the last time. Colonel Whitfield passes the colors to Lieutenant General Izagari, thereby relinquishing his responsibility and authority. Lieutenant General Izagari passes the colors to Colonel Lewis, charging the new commander with the same responsibilities and authority. By authority of Army Regulation 600-20, paragraph 2-5A, the undersigned assumes command of the United States Army Health Contracting Activity, USACA, Joint Base San Antonio, Texas, effective 12 July 2024, signed Colonel Michelle A. Lewis. Colonel Lewis passes the colors back to Sergeant First Class Timsaw, signifying the trust and confidence the commander places in the non-commissioned officers, officers and civilians of the unit to accomplish any mission. Ladies and gentlemen, the Surgeon General and Commanding General, U.S. Army Medical Command, Lieutenant General Mary K. Izagari. All right, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I want to extend a very special welcome to the friends and family of Colonels Whitfield and Lewis. Um, particularly uh, Colonel Whitfield's daughters, Ashley and Aubrey. Great to meet you this morning. Um, to his mom, Persinia, thank you so much for being here. I know as a mom myself, these are the events you live for, um, to be able to celebrate your children's accomplishment. Um, to his sister, Deborah, and his niece, Brittany, um, and all the family and friends that have come from afar, and also virtually his dad, Sergeant Major, uh, Harry Whitfield retired. Uh, thank you for being here to support your soldier. And then also uh, to uh, Colonel Lewis's family, her son M Matthew. Matthew, great to meet you today. Uh, and then also uh, I know many of her family are watching online, family and friends. So thank you for your support as well. To Ms. Gibson, oh my goodness, I still have goosebumps. Um, thank you for honoring us with your clear gift. And Chaplain Vandress, uh, thank you for blessing the ceremony and for supporting uh, our command. And really the entire team putting together a ceremony like this takes a lot of work and commitment. So could you please join me in a round of applause for all who participated. <laughs> now the military health system is a very uh, unique organization, and Army Medicine is one part of that. Uh, we are a dynamic organization that is responsible for sustaining the health of soldiers, families, and retirees, both here and overseas. So it's a pretty darn big mission. And this team ensures that our forces are tactically and technically prepared to do what they are called upon in defense of our nation. And all this is done uh, through continuous transformation because nothing stands still in today's world. So we're always moving forward into how we can innovate and be better. Now often when people think of this, this mission, they think of hospitals, they think of clinics, they might think of a medic with an aid bag delivering care. But I would say that behind those more visible forms of what people think of lies USACA. 
because without the contracts and without the supplies, nothing happens. And so USACA leverages the power of contracts to enhance Army medicine. From right here at Brook Army Medical Center, uh, the flagship of the military health system, and I'll say that, to, I'm Army, what can I say? Um, but, uh, but, this, but it goes global. For example, if you need supplies for an unseen public health emergency like COVID, call USACA. If you have an emergent medical maintenance request, call USACA. Your organization needs to conduct longitudinal research and you need contracts for those researchers, call USACA. How about H2F, holistic health and fitness, the way we are strengthening our force to make sure they're resilient, call USACA. USACA touches all compos across our country and across the globe. I can think of no organization with a more broadly reaching mission than this one. And it is a team of civilians and uniformed personnel that band together bringing their expertise and sometimes creativity to get that new mission done that nobody could have predicted but that the Army needs accomplished. So two things stand out to me when I think about this team. Um, first, you do your mission that is a no-fail mission in the midst of everything changing around you. Like, for the folks, who here works in USACA? Anybody in the audience, raise your hand. So I want you to imagine something for me. Imagine if you came into work one day and the only things that occurred were the things that were already planned. Right? Does that ever happen? No, but you're never bored, right? Never bored. So one thing, the way you, you are agile. And then second, what really impresses me is that you keep the end customer in mind. So while you might be serving BAMC, you're really serving the patients who are getting care in BAMC. So you care for the customer of the customer. And Colonel Whitfield really impressed me upon me that. So Anthony, for the last two years, you have led this team through the change I just, just described viewing everything that we have asked of you under challenging conditions. Now, I'm not surprised by this because I met Colonel Whitfield when I was the commander of Medical Readiness Command East, when we had a, uh, a very unplanned event, Operation Allies Welcome, when we had to set up support for tens of thousands of Afghan travelers who were coming to our country seeking refuge. And I had the privilege of walking the ground and being just floored at what the log cap contracts did to set up almost overnight uh, very, very well-equipped facilities to receive those travelers who had been taken from their homeland. And we got food, we got shelter, we got all sorts of support for them, and Anthony was at the head of that. So under your leadership, this team, has ensured the timely delivery over $3 billion in essential health care services, contracts, medical supplies to the total force families and veterans. You have improved the readiness of the force with a $168 million health and holistic fitness contract that is responsible for proactive management of, to prevention of injuries. And in support of one of the Army's biggest challenges, you, you all help secure behavioral health providers to support our recruiting efforts so that we have enough soldiers to defend our nation. You've supported OCONUS Healthcare for families that are forward as well as soldiers. And through all of this, you have exceeded the small business goals. I know that means a lot to you all. I'm still a nascent learning contracting person. Uh, creating opportunities and innovation for warfighter advantage as well as strengthening supply chains. But out of all the accomplishments that you have made, um, I want to talk about one today that, that Colonel Whitfield shared with me. He shared he was visiting somebody in the hospital who had been diagnosed with and was subsequently being successfully treated for cancer. And as he was there talking to that individual, it really struck him that what was happening around him was all enabled by the work that you all do. Getting back to caring for the customer of the customer. That tells me that Colonel Whitfield is firmly attached to his why, which is a hallmark of any remarkable leader. 
And through all this, Anthony, you have built a cohesive team here, committed professionals, dedicated to the mission with the accomplishments in mind. Um, and that's really clear in everything that USACA does. So let's give all the USACA team and Colonel Whitfield a round of applause. Now, like any good Army leader, Colonel Whitfield realizes he did not do this alone. It is really, and you saw in his recognizing friends and family here that have supported him along the way. Uh, I want to thank Anthony's network of friends and family. Um, your being here was so important to him because he did want that opportunity to thank you for your support along the way. Moms, bonus moms, mentors, daughters especially, um, sisters, everybody who has brought him along the way and friends who have been there for him the whole, the whole ride. And um, so I am confident that Anthony, you'll continue to draw strength from your friends and family, uh, that you will continue to mentor those uh, in your path. And as you move on to the Deputy Acquisition Executive Military, Special Operations Forces for Special Operations Command, I know you're going to continue to excel. So congratulations and best wishes on your next step. Now, as we wish fond farewell to one great leader, we welcome another. Um, so in moving from Colonel Whitfield to Colonel Lewis, um, we are going to continue and build on the tradition of excellence that is USACA. As oh no accident that Michelle is assuming command today, I first had the chance to meet her when I let her know she was going to be assuming command. And uh, she came to me, she was working in the Pentagon, uh, working hard for a very good friend of mine, uh, Lieutenant General Collins, and he could not have told me more good things about her about her work ethic, her team approach, her hard working, her ability to balance hard work as well as knowing when to exhale and shake it all out at your desk. Um, yeah, he told me that story. Um, <laughs> and uh, so she comes to us, she's an MP. Um, she's had key assignments spanning time from her MP time to con leading contracting teams to the commander of the Defense Contract Management Agency, worked for the Assistant Secretary of the Army for Acquisitions Le Logistics and Technology. So she has that perspective, everything from understanding what it takes at the ground level to being able to appreciate the strategic look of how she's got to posture this organization moving forward to most effectively serve. I mentioned she's known as being a humble leader, um, that is not one to trumpet her own successes, but really to amplify the accomplishments of her team. Um, she is committed to the mission, um, not easily rattled either. As an MP, uh, you're, you're going to have a hard time scaring her. So I'm not challenging to try, but um, she is a, a real hard worker. And so Michelle, welcome to the Army Medicine family. As I shared with you in my office, you're now adopted. And so you're now a member of the family, and I'm confident that you are the right leader at the right time. I know you are thrilled that Matthew is here, and Matthew, you're going to start school in a couple weeks here, join the, the team here in Texas. Being a, a freshman, you're a computer programmer. My, my sons do that as well. There's a very bright future for you in that field. Um, but your mom appreciates the caring, kind, and respectful young man that you are growing up to be. So we are thrilled to welcome you to the RB Medicine family as well. Um, many, as I mentioned, Michelle's family is uh, joining us virtually. Her dad, uh, Patrick Sr., um, is a retired pipe fitter with Long Island Railroad, and her parents um, were both born in Trinidad and then came to the U.S. and uh, raised their children in Brooklyn, New York, and uh, then now they are, re her dad is happily retired in uh, Blakesley, Pennsylvania, enjoying his retirement. And then uh, her brother, Patrick Jr., and his wife, Gayla, are watching from Atlanta, Georgia. So uh, thank you for your support uh, to Michelle. And then her sister, Patrine, and, uh, and her daughter, uh, Jordan. So Michelle says her family has taught her to overcome adversity, uh, to shine through all that, and to learn through trials. And that's where we will find our greatest strength together. So Michelle, welcome to the Army family. Let's give her a, a round of applause. Army Medicine family. 
Um, so it is wonderful when we're able to conduct these ceremonies to witness the change of responsibility and command between great leaders like Anthony and Michelle. It makes me confident that our army, even though we live in incredibly volatile times, is ready to meet whatever challenges lie ahead. Our country needs us to do that. We are the people that are standing up and stepping forward. And so our entire team, civilian, military, contractors, all compos working jointly with the Navy and Air Force as well as with our international partners are at the watch. We will ensure that our freedoms continue to be protected and that we are able to live in the greatest land. Combat Ready Care, this will defend. Ladies and gentlemen, the former commander, senior contracting official of the MedCom U.S. Army Health Contracting Activity, Colonel Anthony K. Whitfield. Good morning. If you can bear with me, I would like to take this opportunity to speak to my Heavenly Father in prayer. Father, the day has come. It is time to close one chapter and start a new one. Thank you for your love, care, and guidance, for I could not get to this point without you. We are to trust in you with all our heart and lean not to our own understanding. And in all of thy ways, we are to acknowledge you, and you guarantee that you will direct our paths. I pray for the covering and protection of your people. I thank you for your presence, for where two or three are gathered in your name, you are there. In the MedCom, our motto is combat ready care, this we'll defend. We know that we live in a fallen world and we thank you for the many who are part of the medical enterprise with the role of caring for and healing our soldiers, families, and veterans. May the same grace and favor you provided me during my tour be double for Colonel Lewis. And when all is said and done, I can truly say, Lord, you are my shepherd, I shall not want. You make me lie down in green pastures, you lead me beside still waters. You restore my soul. You lead me in the path of righteousness for your name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cups run over. Surely, goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives, and we will dwell in your house forever. Amen. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, family and friends, those on live stream, thank you for attending today's ceremony. It is a great honor to stand before you as the outgoing commander of a great organization and a lineage of leaders who have set the example in commitment and dedication to providing superior contract support, enhancing Army medicine globally for the total force that is for our warfighters, families, and veterans. While I could relay all of the accomplishments, dollars obligated, and contract actions executed, I will leave you with this story. The U.S. Army Health Contracting Activity is responsible for delivering health care services, medical supplies, and equipment. Often we don't see the tangible effects of what we do, and during this tour I met a young major who had been sent to Brook Army Medical Center after being diagnosed with cancer. When I first met him, he was highly optimistic but had concerns. His concerns stemmed not from being diagnosed with a deadly disease, but from the fact that his unit was deploying and he felt he had let them down. After receiving a perfect match for bone marrow and undergoing treatment, I had the opportunity to be in the hospital room and when his doctors gave him the best news possible. He would be released and continue treatment on an outpatient basis. It did not matter whether the doctors, nurses, and staff were government or contractors, what mattered was his healing. We are a people business, and our biggest asset is our people. It has been an absolute blessing and honor to serve as the commander of the U.S. Army Health Contracting Activity. I am humbled to have served side by side of the world's best acquisition professionals and staff supporting Army medicine. You are truly heroes. 
Over the last two years, I have watched the Army Medicine team respond when our nation called and accomplished unforeseen missions during some of the most challenging circumstances in recent times. Your dedicated and rapid response to crisis has demonstrated the relevance and readiness of Army Medicine. You are there and never questioned the importance of standing shoulder to shoulder with our partners, allies, and civilian counterparts. It was your professional excellence that led to unprecedented success. Your daily synergistic teamwork across the command demonstrated Army Medicine's commitment to the soldiers' families and veterans that we are proud to serve. Continue to remain strong while you deliver key health care services, med medical supplies, and equipment. Thank you for your selfless service and dedication to the mission. Your support of Army Medicine and the nation is deeply appreciated. I am proud to have served alongside our nation's best. To my family and friends who took time out of their busy schedules to be here with me today, thank you. I am forever grateful for your love and support throughout the years. Let me close by congratulating Colonel Michelle A. Lewis and her son Matthew. Much success and please don't hesitate to reach out if needed. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again for the honor of your presence here today. May God continue to bless our country and our work to protect and serve our nation. Ladies and gentlemen, the commander of the United States Army Health Contracting Activity, Colonel Michelle A. Lewis. Okay. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, friends and family, thank you all for being here. First, a couple of announce, uh, acknowledgments to the leadership teams for the time and effort they put into the Senior Leader Forum and insisting in bringing me on board. It was greatly appreciated. And many thanks to every, for everyone that played a part in making today's ceremony possible. It is a privilege to be standing here today as we tr transition leadership of this organization. I'm deeply honored to be a part of the U.S. Army Health Contracting Activity. The very names, name suggests the importance of the work that is being executed, which is to provide superior contracting support to our warfighters and medical community. From what I have learned this week, this organiza organization has strengthened relationships within their respective regions, contracted and developed medical capabilities, and ensured med readiness of the Army. These accomplishments make me both grateful and humbled as I consider the enormous responsibilities inherent to the command. And of course, I have to say until further notice, notice, I will continue Colonel Whitfield's priorities. To my son, Matthew, I am so proud of the remarkable young man you are becoming. Honestly, I'm probably more grateful, and proud, more grateful than proud because I get to be the mom of a tremendous young man. To my immediate family who are watching virtually, this has been a rough time for our family. And while we are mourning, we must remember to celebrate the life she lived and know that she is still with us in spirit. I love you all. To the soldiers and the U U.S. government civilians and the U.S. Army Health Contract Activity, thank you for honors today and today with the ceremony. I eagerly anticipate visiting and working alongside you all and your families. I have one simple request. For every challenge, there are opportunities, and we will tackle those challenges together. So let's strive to give our best every day and promise to do this, and I promise to do the same. To my family and friends who took the time out of their busy schedules and traveled far, um, and uh, for those on virtually, thank you. I am grateful for your love and support. And I would be remiss if I didn't say thank you to Colonel Whitfield. I wish you and your family all the best in your next assignment. Thank you. And ladies and gentlemen, Thank you again, once again, to, for honoring me for your presence today. May God continue to bless our country and our work one contract at a time. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the plan of the Army song. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. On behalf of the soldiers and civilians of the United States Army Health Contracting Activity, thank you for attending today's ceremony. Please join us welcoming Colonel Lewis and her family at the reception located at Kilmer Hall next door. All the USACA team members, please join us at the